Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss drawing dot and cross diagrams. Now drawing dot cross diagram, it is a fundamental and important part of chemical bonding. If you are given a particular simple molecule or a cation or an ion, what we need to be able to do is, based on the dot cross diagram, we figure out what is the actual Lewis structure of that species. And it is actually tied to another portion involving chemical bonding, which is the shapes of molecules, because we need to figure out based on the central atom, what are the arrangements of the surrounding atoms with respect to the central atom. Only then we can determine the shapes of that particular molecule or species. So we have a few guidelines for us to draw the cross diagram. So let's run through them. Now the first guideline involving drawing the cross diagram is we need to determine the central atom. So usually, the atom that requires the most electrons to be stable, it would be the central atom. So if I need more electrons, then it makes sense that I will sit at the center. So it is easier for me to form more bonds with more neighbors. So usually the atom which requires more bonds to be stable or octet, it would be at the center. And for species that can expand octet, and because it can potentially form more bonds, it would also sit at the center. Now, in general, when we talk about central atom, there are a few guidelines that schools might go through, but there are quite a few guidelines to use, and all of them would have exceptions. So my preference is we will just stick to one guideline, which is this guy that we have mentioned here, so that it will not be so confusing. Now the second guideline, when we talk about ions. Now if I have an anion, the electrons will be given to the more electronegative atom, that means when you have excess electron. When I throw the electron in, who is the one that will catch the electron? The atom or the element that is more electronegative will like the electron more. So the electrons will be assigned to the more electronegative atom. On the other hand, if we talk about cations, the electrons would be removed from the less electronegative atom. When I take electrons away from the species, the one which is more willing to give up the electron would give up the electron which is the less electronegative atom, because it doesn't like the electron that much. So that's idea number two. Now idea number three, the central atom will distribute its electrons to the surrounding atoms to make them stable. So how I interpret this is, it will be the responsibility for the central atom to make the surrounding atoms happy, to make them stable. So the surrounding atoms will ask the central atom to give it a certain number of electrons in order to make it stable. And as much as possible, the central atom will accommodate and it will distribute its electrons to make the surrounding atoms happy, make them stable. So that's idea number three. Now idea number four, the atoms will form the same number of bonds as the number of additional electrons required for stability. Now this idea actually, it is also fairly straightforward. If I only need one electron, to be stable or to be octet, then I'll just form one bond. So things like hydrogen, halogen, there's a tendency for them to form only one bond. If let's say for example, oxygen, oxygen is in group 16, six valence electrons need two more electrons to be octet. So if it needs two electrons, you have a tendency to form two bonds in order to be octet. So similarly for nitrogen needs three electrons to be octet, tend to form three bonds. Carbon need four electrons to be octet, tends to form four bonds. So the idea effectively is this. So what this means is actually the number of bonds that each atom can form is predictable because every one of them will be in a specific group. So based on which group it is in, I can roughly predict whether this guy can form whatever number of bonds. So it is not a total random process. Now the next point, point number five, the central atom would expand octet to form more bonds if necessary. Actually, this is tied to point number six, so maybe we can talk about it together. Point number six is only period two elements cannot expand octet. So period two elements, which will include carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Boron, we don't need to consider because boron, we don't have instances where it has so many bonds that it expands octet because it is in group 13. So we only need to remember this four guys. Now the idea of expansion of octet is if it can expand octet, it would expand octet because expansion of octet would mean that the central atom will form more bonds. If I form more bonds, then I will release more energy and it will become more stable. So what is important is 
expansion of octet now is the norm it is not the exception octet rule is the exception so this is something that we want to keep in mind because at secondary level we are very familiar with octet rule octet rule so some of us would think that octet rule is the norm expansion of octet is special it is unusual actually it is the other way around because out of so many elements only period two elements cannot expand octet because they don't have d subshells so if they can expand octet and i can form more bonds and i can become more stable then why wouldn't i do it correct so period three elements and beyond they would be able to form more bonds and if need to they would do that now take note expansion of octet only applies to the central atom usually the surrounding atom would not expand octet and in my opinion i think it is a good idea for us to remember who cannot expand octet as compared to which species can expand octet so my preference in terms of remembering is i just remember these four elements carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine cannot expand octet and all the other elements they are able to form more bonds and can have more than eight electrons around its valence shell if necessary all right let's have some examples to illustrate what we have been trying to say so let's do the first example nitrate no3 minus now no3 minus the first thing we have to determine is the central atom nitrogen is in group 15 need three electrons to be octet oxygen is in group 16 need two electrons to be octet so nitrogen because it needs more electrons to be octet and we'll see at the center oxygen will sit at the side so i've already determined the central atom so i can put the n at the center oxygen i can put at the side so i'll have three oxygens here the next thing is i have to account for the negative charge now negative charge means i have an additional electron which i will throw inside here which is the atom that will catch or take this electron it will be the more electronegative element which will be oxygen oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen so what we would do is i can draw the additional electron on one of the oxygen in this case i would use a triangle to represent the additional electron so that it is more obvious that this is the additional electron then my preference is once i've accounted for this negative charge straight away i draw this bond so that i can settle the bond involving this oxygen now oxygen is in group 16 requires two more electrons to be octet this oxygen already has one electron from the triangle the negative charge so it just need one more electron from nitrogen so you will form a single bond with nitrogen so what you would do is it will share one electron with nitrogen and ask nitrogen to share one electron back so this will be a normal covalent bond a single bond and we can put in the rest of the electrons for oxygen oxygen has five more electrons one two three four five six electrons so this oxygen is octet this oxygen is happy so we settle this guy the next one is this oxygen oxygen as mentioned requires two electrons to be octet so what you will do is you will ask nitrogen nitrogen i share two electrons with you you share two electrons with me so that i can become octet so nitrogen as mentioned it is the responsibility for the central atom to make all the surrounding atoms stable so nitrogen will share the two electrons and i draw the remaining electrons for oxygen this oxygen will be octet this oxygen settle now this oxygen is exactly the same as this guy right so what you will try to do is you will do the same thing in nitrogen i share two electrons with you can you share two electrons with me and you make me octet now what we have to remember is period two elements cannot expand octet carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine cannot expand octet so nitrogen it cannot expand octet what we need to ensure is i need to go and count the total number of electrons make sure it doesn't exceed eight electrons in this case can nitrogen share the second double bond if you go and count the total number of electrons in this case nitrogen will have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten electrons which is not allowed what this means is this nitrogen cannot share the second double bond because it would expand out there which is not allowed for nitrogen but oxygen still wants two electrons from nitrogen so what do we do in this case is since the nitrogen cannot share the double bond but oxygen still wants two electrons from nitrogen then what we do is we just convert the double bond to a dt bond from nitrogen to oxygen so instead of sharing two electrons what nitrogen would do is since i cannot expand of that i just give you two electrons i take away the double bond it will just be a dt bond from nitrogen to oxygen 
Now, nitrogen gives two electrons to oxygen. Then we can draw the remaining electrons with respect to O, six electrons. Three, four, five, six. So this oxygen will be octet. We have to come back to the central atom, make sure all the electrons are counted for. Nitrogen is in group 15, five valence electrons. So the five electrons are here, one, two, three, four, five. And I go and count the total number of electrons around nitrogen. It is also octet. So more or less we are done. This will be the dot cross diagram for nitrate, NO3 minus. If your school don't allow the triangle, because some tutors will say that dot and cross diagram is not dot cross triangle diagram, so you cannot draw other symbols, which actually it is not wrong. So if we don't want the triangle, we can always convert this back to a dot. So this dot will represent the additional electron because we know that oxygen has six electrons. I have six crosses here. So the crosses will represent the electron for oxygen. This dot inside this bond between the nitrogen and oxygen, this dot will be the electron from nitrogen. This dot, which is not bonded to anything, so this dot will be the additional electron from the negative charge. So maybe we also draw in the Lewis structure for this guy so that we can see the dative bond. So the Lewis structure will look something like this. Nitrogen will be here. This is a single bond, oxygen. This is a dative bond. Nitrogen arrow to oxygen, dative bond oxygen. Then I have a double bond O. So this will be a double bond oxygen. And overall, this will be a negative charge. Interestingly, for nitrate, NO3 minus, all the NO bonds are different. This is a normal covalent bond, this is a dative bond, and this is a double bond. So this will be the dot cross diagram for NO3 minus. Now let's have another example, PCL4 minus. Now PCL4 minus, the first thing again is we have to determine the central atom. Phosphorus, which is in group 15, requires three electrons to be octane while chlorine, which is a halogen, just need one electron to be octet. So phosphorus will require more electrons to be stable. So P will be at the center, Cl will be at the side. Now, when we draw so many surrounding halogen, usually recommended is you draw the central atom bigger and you draw the halogen smaller so that it is easier for me to draw the lone pair around the halogen. So I will draw a big P and the chlorine, I will draw them smaller. So I draw it slightly smaller, Cl, 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 4, chlorine. Then the next thing we need to determine will be the negative charge, same thing, which is the species that will take the negative charge. Again, it will be the more electronegative atom, which in this case will be chlorine. So what I will do is I will put a triangle on one of this Cl to represent the additional electron. The next thing is once I've drawn this out, I have to settle this bond. Now Cl is in group 17, you only need one more electron to be octet. So you notice this Cl when it gains this additional electron from the negative charge, this Cl would already be octet. If it is already octet, then it doesn't need any more electrons from the central atom. So if it does form a bond with the central atom, then this bond would just be a dative bond from Cl to phosphorus. Again, the reason is because this Cl is already octet, so if I form a normal covalent bond with you, I share one electron with you, you share one electron with me, then I have nine electrons, which is not necessary, right? So what this means is if this surrounding atom is already octet, and if it forms a bond with the central atom, then this will just be a dative bond from the surrounding atom to the central atom. So we know that this is a dative bond. We put in the rest of the electrons for chlorine. So this bond is settled. Now for the rest of the bonds, it is pretty straightforward. For each one of them, chlorine is in group 17, need one electron to be octet, share one electron with phosphorus, phosphorus share one back. So this will be a normal covalent bond. Then we put in the rest of the electrons for this Cl. This is a normal covalent bond. Put in the surrounding electrons. This is also a normal covalent bond. Put in the rest of the electrons for Cl. So all the surrounding atoms settle. Now finally, we want to go to the central atom, phosphorus, make sure we account for all the electrons. Phosphorus, five valence electron. One is here, two is here, three is here, two more electrons. So I need to put in the lone pair with respect to phosphorus. So this will be the dot cross diagram for PCl4 minus. 
I put the overall negative charge. Again, if you don't like the triangle, you change it to a dot. But to me, I don't think it matters that much. So for the Lewis structure, maybe you can put it here. P Cl4 minus. So I will draw four chlorine surrounding phosphorus. Remember this bond is a dirty bond from Cl to P. So I'll draw this arrow here. Then the remaining will just be a normal covalent bond. Covalent bond, covalent bond, covalent bond. I still have a lone pair on phosphorus. I put the two lone pair here. And I draw the orbital. And I put the overall negative charge. So this will be the Lewis structure for PCL4 minus. All right, let's do one more example involving ozone, O3. Now O3, everything is oxygen, right? So oxygen will just be the central atom. I'll just put oxygen at the center and the remaining two oxygens at the side. Now the idea is the same. The surrounding atom will demand a certain number of electrons from the central atom. The job of the central atom oxygen is to make the surrounding atoms stable, make them happy. So this oxygen is in group 16. I need two electrons to be octet. So what I would do is I'll ask the central atom, hey, I share two electrons with you. You share two electrons with me. You make me octet. You make me stable. So this central atom will just accommodate, make this guy happy. So this will be a double bond. So this is straightforward. This oxygen also wants to be the same as this oxygen. You do exactly the same thing. You will try to share two electrons. A central atom, I share two electrons with you. Can you share two electrons with me? Now remember, oxygen is imperial too. Cannot expand octet. So can it share this second double bond? Remember, oxygen has six valence electrons. So in this case, if it forms the second double bond, you still have two more electrons to account for as a lone pair. And in this case, if I go and count the total number of electrons, this will be four electrons, eight electrons, 10 electrons. Again, it is not allowed. This oxygen cannot share the second double bond because it cannot expand octet. So this surrounding atom, oxygen, still wants two electrons from the central atom. So what we do, very simple, I convert this double bond, convert it to a dative bond from oxygen to this surrounding oxygen. So this will be a dative bond. I put in the rest of the electrons for oxygen, six electrons. So what we have is this will just be the dot cross diagram for O3 ozone. If we put in the Lewis structure, this is also fairly straightforward. Oxygen is here, oxygen, oxygen. I have a double bond O, I have a dative bond O, and I have a lone pair with respect to the central atom. So this would be the Lewis structure for O3. So that was the discussion involving dot and cross diagram. Now at our level, we cannot draw dot cross diagram by trial and error method because now we have species that can form more than eight electrons around the central atom. We have elements that can expand octet. We also need to consider dative bond. We need to be able to decide how do I know whether this is a dative bond? And if it is a dative bond, is it a dative bond from the central atom to the surrounding atom? Or is it a dative bond from the surrounding atom to the central atom? Because based on the examples that we've given in this video, we have instances where the dative bond is from the central atom to the surrounding atom and vice versa. So all this is based on deduction. We cannot random draw and we hope that everybody is octet. So the approach is a very systematic approach. Now, if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.